Hi everyone and welcome to this Back to Basics session where we're going to take a closer look at creating families. The reason why we're doing this is we want to be much more productive when using particular types of family. The one I'm going to focus in on on this session is the pile. So you can see at the minute in this particular plan here we have a piling layout and I have a symbolic view displayed for our pile. This is ideal for when you have scales of perhaps 1 to 100. You can see here we've also got our piling schedule. If I go into the second sheet over here, you can see that the second sheet here is now displaying the pile caps, um, the raft foundation, and also the piles again, but the piles here are shown in hidden detail. Also, if we take a look at the sectional view on this sheet, you'll notice that the piles are cutting into the cap automatically, and we also have a break symbol shown. None of these details have been placed manually, it's all automated, and it's all built into the family. So first let's take a look at why families out of the box aren't a great idea to use. If I go to my top of foundation plan, what I'm going to do here is just show you an out of the box family. So on the structure ribbon, I'm going to select isolated. And in here, the out of the box family that I'm going to show you is the pile steel pipe. And if I place one of these down, so let's just drop a couple of these down here, you can see they're not hosted on anything. So what you've got to do is actually put it in on a particular level, and then you have to rely on this height offset from level to actually place that at the level you want. Or you have to create reference planes or levels where you want these to go. That can be a little bit tedious. The other problem with this is if you want to put a spot coordinate down, so if I go to spot coordinate, you can see here that we can't actually get the center point. Yeah, we can get the uh, horizontal plane or the kind of vertical plane or indeed the perimeter, but not the center. Also, if I wanted to dimension this, so I'm just going to quickly create a section through here. Just to elevate these two piles, we'll go into a sectional view. There they are. So if I now wanted to dimension these, you can see here that I can't. I can go to the, uh, the center in here, but I can't actually get the pile itself. The reason for this is there's no reference planes set up to enable me to do this. Okay, so we can see uh, some of the problems with the out of the box content. So let's have a look at how this content works. So I'm going to go into the 3D view here. Um, let's use this cap over here. So I'm just going to delete this, this pile. And here I'll say create similar. So you can see this particular pile is just called in situ pile. This one is face based. So what will happen now is as we place this down, what you'll notice is it automatically cuts a rebate or a, a penetration into my foundation. Now that will cut a rebate into pretty much anything. Not that we would ever want this, but if I wanted a pile over here, yeah, again, you can see that it's cut that rebate into the family. Okay, so now that we have that in, let's go back to our top of foundation here and we'll go ahead and set out that pile. Now, I think this is the pile that I've just uh, created in here. That's um, dead in the center of the cap over there. Perhaps what we'll do is we'll make a copy of this. So let's uh, select this, unlock those, and we'll just pop that over here. And we'll make a copy over here. Um, so what we'll do here, let's make that um, 900. Okay, so that's 900 centers, and of course then I can set that up um, and move those exactly where I want them to go. Right, what I really want to show you though is essentially how the plan's working. So if I change this to a course level of detail, you can now see that we're showing this symbolic symbol. However, because the actual symbolic symbol in the family is under the element, i.e. under the pile cap, what I've done here is I've set up a little filter, and this one's called PCT. If I click on the transparency override, what this will do is make all of the formwork, or i.e. all of the kind of slabs and foundations, transparent. So therefore I can see through. Now, of course, it's not going to affect any of the other elements because it is a filter. So let's show you how that filter is actually working. So if I select the view ribbon, you can see that we can access our filters through here. If I select my PCT filter, you'll see in here that it's simply now applied just to structural foundations. And it's saying here, if the description equals foundation, then show it like this. So just to show you how that works, if I select this and I do edit type, and I remove the reference to foundation on description, yeah, you can then see that all of those families now don't show the uh, symbolic view. So that's how that's actually working in practice. 
Now another big advantage with this family is if I elevate this with a section, so let's just cut section through. I'll just cut through the cap, but I'll elevate the piles. You can see that we've got a relatively nice looking detail in there. If I change my scale to perhaps 1 to 20, yeah, we can see that all uh, coming into play over here. Now what I want to do is traditionally, if I wanted to break these piles in here, I'd have to go to annotate, I'd have to go to uh, my detail component. Yeah, I'd then have to go and find a pipe break symbol, which I, I haven't got in here actually, and then I'd have to draw those in. But what I can do with my particular family here is I can select the piles themselves and I can say don't show me the pile but show me just the break symbol. And there we have it, we can see the break symbols. In here I can control that break symbol uh, depth, so maybe 750, and there's my nice little detail ready to go. So obviously that's a lot more efficient than manually detailing all of those uh, piles. And of course I can do that on any of my uh, pile families. So how is all this working? Well, let's select one of the piles and we'll go to edit family and in here you can see that I've got a face based family. I've started that by going to file new family and in here I've used metric generic model face based. Now when you do this, I'll just start this new family up. When you do this, if I go to family category and parameters, straight away I can then code this as a structural foundation. And in here, I would say cut with voids when loaded and material for model behavior would become concrete. So that's how I'd set that basic family up. Once I've got that set up, you can see in here that I've created a void family. Okay. So the void is actually cutting the um, cutout inside the face that the pile's hosted onto. So that's automatically creating a little rebate for the pile to sit in. The pile itself is, of course, just a very simple extrusion. What I really want to show you, though, is the detail components. So if I go to my front view over here, you can see that I have a detail component set up in here. Um, you'll notice that it's drawing in foreground. Um, you'll notice here that the visibility of this is actually associated to a family parameter. And in here, I've got show pile break symbol. If I select the pile itself over here, and again, we go back to our visibility in here, this 3D pile is show pile. You've just got to remember that when you put a detail in here on front elevation, you've got to do the same thing on the left and right, because clearly you could view the pile from either side. With other rotations, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, if I go to a plan view, you can see in here that I have my plan detail nested in. Um, what I've done here, if I just bring another one of these in, so let's use our uh, piling plan symbol, pop that in. All we need to do here is select that, edit type, and you very simply associate the diameter of the symbol to the diameter of the pile. That keeps everything parametric, so if the pile changes or the pile cap changes, then obviously all your little details will update and change as well. And that also goes for our pile break symbol as well. Another thing to note is if I go back to my floor plan, you'll notice I have reference planes on the quadrant points of the pile. That means, that of course, I can uh, dimension this and reference it and so on. And also, when I want to snap down a spot coordinate or a level on this, it can snap to the centre of the pile because we have these reference planes set up in here. OK, so let's close this down and we'll go back into our project. And in here, we'll just take a quick look at placing down some spot coordinates now. So if I go to my spot coordinate tool, obviously it's much easier um, to actually find the center point of our piling. Yeah, nice and easy, like so. And if I wanted to detail each pile like that, I could do with my spot coordinate symbol. However, um, I'm using our Excitec toolkit here to actually recover the coordinates, as you can see in the properties palette for all of the piles. Now, of course, you can take that intelligent pile family and then nest that into pile caps. So rather than actually setting out all the piles manually, what you can do is go to the isolated foundation. And in here, I've just built a simple demonstration one. You can see here I've got a four pile pile cap. So if I pop that down over here, let's select that and do edit type. I've set this one up. So if I go into the pile diameter, so let's change this to 750. You can then see it drives all of the other dimensions based on the uh, the pile spacing rule. Yep, and there it is. Okay, so that's obviously a much more efficient way of placing down standard piles underneath pile caps. 
Okay, so I hope that's been useful for a, a first video. Um, in future videos, we'll take a look at some other structured elements such as columns, beams, and I'll give you some tips and tricks on creating better content for your projects. Okay, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.